Amen and amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on a beautiful Wednesday evening. I pray that you're having a great day and uh, uh, God has been good to us. I have not heard from Scott. I haven't followed up. And I said, bad pastor, but you know how the week gets away from you. You start doing things and doing things and things start doing things to you and stuff just keeps happening. But God is still on the throne and uh, we're here to have church. Yeah. Sister Maria is here with us. She's brought, come here, man. Again. Why is my forgetter working? Joseph. Joseph. Joseph is here. And we're here. Brother Ken is there. So let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer and invite him into this service. Heavenly Father, we're again so grateful, O oh Lord, for the privilege, Father, to be in your house, Lord. Another opportunity to praise your holy name, O oh God, to give you glory and honor, Father, for the grace and the mercy that you've shared with us, O oh God. And Lord, how you kept your hand upon us, God. And Lord, we've made it safely through this week. And God, we come tonight to draw closer to you. Lord, Lord, if there be any doubts, if there be any fears, uh, Lord, whatever it is that might hinder us, God, we ask that you would help us get it out of our lives, that we might draw closer to you, and we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say amen. Amen and amen. Sister Hicks, I'm not synced with you yet. Tell me the How many believe the true report? I believe the true report. Amen. I believe the true report. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I have passed the outer court. Oh, I'm not. I'm not hearing him beat. Turn it. Turn the drum up a little bit. Okay, I turn mine up a little bit. You don't have to turn it up. You're good. Put it on your two. We're speeding the drama up so Sister Hicks can be happy. I'm going to hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have passed the river there where the glory's never been. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am living in the presence of the King. I have passed the outer court. Oh, glory be to God. I am all on Jesus' side. On the altar, Satan fight. To the world of sin, I died. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have passed the ribbon veil where the glory never fails. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am living in the presence of the King. I'm a king and priest to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I have passed the cleanse of blood. Oh, glory be to God by the power, spirit, and light. I'm the out day and night in the holiest place so bright. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am where the glories never fail. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am living in the presence of the King. I have passed the outer veil. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Which watch thy seal. Oh, glory be to God. But the blood has brought me in. To God's holiness so clean. Where there's death to self and sin. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have passed the ribbon there where the glories never fail. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I am living in the presence of the King. Verse 4, I'm within the holiest veil. Hallelujah to the Lamb, I have passed the inner veil. Oh, glory be to God. I am sanctified to God by the power of the blood. Now the Lord is my abode. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have passed the ribbon veil where the glories never fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
No matter what's going on in the world, we have a God that we can turn to, and He will take us all the way to glory. Open the eyes of my heart. 
Oh, hallelujah. I want to see I want to see you, God. Open the eyes. I want to see you. You know this song. Help us. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yes, I want to see you. Sometimes we just miss that part. We miss that part because we want to dance, we want to shout, we want to praise Him. But I remember, <laughs> I remember that sweet spirit Sunday afternoon as Chanel was praying. And she didn't get up until she got what she had needed. And that was an inspiration to me because, brothers and sisters, that's what we come to church for. We come to get a touch from God. We get come to get our souls ministered to. We come to make a connection with our Heavenly Father. And if you've only come to punch a clock, if you've only come to sing a few songs, you can do that. But I'm telling you, it's better to meet with God. Ask him to open the eyes of your heart that you might see him, that you might experience his love, his grace, and his mercy. He's holy. He's holy and he's here. He said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of him. And so if Jesus is here, I want to touch him. Do you want to touch him? I need him, oh God. Lord, move in our hearts, oh God. Stir us. Lord God, don't let this just be a midnight, a midweek service, but let this be another opportunity for me to be blessed by my Savior, the lover of my soul, the lifter of my head. You're holy, God, and you're worthy of praise, and I want to see you. Have your way this evening, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated. It really is good to be back in the house of God. It's good that uh, I forgot you told me you were coming. I see him all the time. No. <laughs> John, we love you. And mom, what a treat. It's just good to see everybody. Maria showed up. I was like, whoa, that's Maria. And that guy. Joseph. I know. I got it this time. He told me. <laughs> Joseph. Put my name on it, then I'll remember. No. 
I'm just glad everybody's here. You know, I'm, I'm glad about what God is doing, and he's doing something very special here. And, and I, I believe it's not just here in Albuquerque, but I believe it's around the world as men and women begin to give their hearts to God. But it's up to us to get the word out that he's real. Get the word out that he loves them and that they don't have to continue to wallow in sin and darkness and pain, but they can come to the house of God and get some ministering for their soul to be revived in their spirit and leave saying it was good to be. It was good to be in service. Amen. It was good to, to just come here and see you guys. Face. I'm telling you, that was the thrill for me. Just seeing each walk through the door like, yes, all right. And sometimes I'm worshiping and, and, and my eyes are closed. And you say, well, you're on the stage. I'm sorry. But it's not a performance for me. It's really a worship. I'm worshiping God. So while I'm worshiping God, and I open my eyes and say, oh, who snuck in here? Wow, okay, praise God. <laughs> but that's good, that's good. Surprise me some more. Let's have church, amen? Be mindful, tomorrow we'll have prayer meeting from 6 to 7, Saturday Bible study. I encourage you, come get some. I know Maria's coming because she's always there. She's always there, she's faithful. Now, Joseph, I don't know. Maybe we can, maybe Maria can wrangle you, and you just got to get home a little bit earlier Maria might drag you up here, I mean, bring you up here to come to Bible. <laughs> but it's a good time, and it's a sweet time to just learn more about the Word of God and understand what God, God has a lot of promises for us. And we don't have them because a lot of people don't know about them. They don't realize the gifts that God has given us. He said, we have not because we ask not, and people don't ask because they don't realize that's a privilege that God has given us. So I, I want people to know these are things. We don't have to walk around with our head hung low. We are the servants of the Most High God. And he is more than able to bless and keep us if we trust in him. Now people say, well, I trust in the government. Well, governments fall. You hear what I say? Presidents fail, but God never fails. Amen. Our God, he never changes, he never leaves. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I trust in him. You try him out, I guarantee you, you will not regret it. Amen? Sunday morning, our big push, 11 o'clock, invite, 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 encourage. Bring somebody. You say, well, who am I bring? Bring a friend. Bring an enemy. You say, well, I don't have any enemies. Good, bring some more friends. Come on, <laughs> just... Bring anybody. Let them come hear the good news about what God has for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. This time we're going to wait upon you to receive our midweek tithes and offerings. You give is giving unto the Lord, and the Lord will bless you according to your giving. Mm -hmm. You're saying he's going to bless me according to the amount, because let me count that out. No, I'm talking about the spirit which which you give. Amen? Yes. And I give is giving unto the Lord, because I know who it is that takes care of me. One of these days, I'm going to say, Michael, would you pray? But right now, <laughs> Dad, would you pray? Father, we thank you, God. It's a privilege and a joy to give back to you. Yes. Bless the gift that we give, God, and the sale we run upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 John, can you uh, redirect that camera to this way? This one up here. I want to say thank you for your giving. May God bless you for your giving. Sister Hicks and I are going to sing a special. This is our first time. This is a premiere. So let God minister to your heart. Amen. Did I say thank you for your giving? We sincerely appreciate it. All right, ushers, you ready to get fired. This is a whole other side over there you got to collect on. Let's go. Amen. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, There is only one foundation we believe. 
we believe in this broken generation when all is dark Let's see. And there is only one salvation. We believe. We believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than anthems greater than the songs we sing and in our weakness and temptations we believe we believe we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. Let the lost be found and the dead be raised in the here and now. Let love invade, let the church live love. Our God will save. We believe, we believe. And the gates of hell will not prevail. For the power of God has torn the veil. Now we know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. How many believe tonight? God's coming back. He's coming back for a church without wrinkle, without a spot. And God is the only one that can prepare us to be so clean in his eyes. Are you going to be ready? And do you believe? Because he is coming back. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Hicks. Hallelujah. All right, cameraman. Make the adjustments. Amen. Y'all didn't even see when the, uh, what's the call? The newsboys showed up, did y'all? We, <laughs> we were the newsboys. The nerd boys. The nerd boys. <laughs> <laughs> we tried it, though. Amen. Amen. Hey, you know what? And having the angels are like, look at them. Bless them, God. Because <laughs> we really do. I, I love God. And I don't mind singing. And I'll be a fool for my Jesus. Amen. I've been a fool for the world. Come on now. You've all done things that you look back and say, I can't believe I did that. But when I'm doing it for God, there's no shame. I just step out on faith and trust him. Amen. My Bible reading is found in Jeremiah chapter 2. 
Jeremiah 2, I'm beginning to read at verse 9. God says, wherefore I will plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim and see and send to Kedar, and consider diligently and diligently and see if there if there be such a thing. Have a nation change their gods, which are yet no gods. But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the foundation of living waters, and hewed out them up, out them cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Jeremiah 2 verse 13, I'm using for a text. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken, forsaken me, the foundation of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Tonight, I'd like to preach on two great evils. Two great evils. Reverend Tensia, would you stand and pray, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day, Lord. Thank you, God, for your word. We love you, Father. Mm. Bless our sister. God, oh, Jesus. Amen and amen. God literally said, ask yourself a question. Who would set aside the fountain of living water for a cracked water pot? Who would, who would, you know that in Albuquerque, we do a lot of recycling of water because we in the desert, okay? So when we get rain, we save the rainwater to put on plants. We only get rain, what? <laughs> here and there. But if you get some rain, I know people that recycle that water. They don't recycle it so they can go drink it later, right? Nobody wants some good rain water to drink, right? No, no, we don't want that because it's, it's, not, it's not tasty. It's not something that you want to go and get a cold drink of. But God says you traded the living water for these cisterns that have this old stale water, and the cisterns have the nerve to have a hole in them. In fact, that water is going to run out. That's what the world has done compared to what God had offered them. And that's what the people of God had done to God. See, it's one thing when the world turns its back on God, but when the, God's own people, that's got to be, you know, that's like your own children turning their back on you. You're like, dude, I made you. <laughs> Don't you know you're nothing without me? You were nothing, literally, before me and my husband got together. You were nothing. But now we made you into this, and now you're going to turn your, I don't know about you, but I know mom would be like, psh, 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 psh. my head would still be sitting like this. <laughs> But God said, he said to the Israelites, they were doing this very thing when they turned from him, the fountain of living water, to worship idols. To worship idols, things that really didn't have any life. To worship these things that were no God as if they were somehow equal to God. And Americans do it every day. They worship the God of TV, the God of booze. The God of drugs. Come on, the God of money. I, I got to climb the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the ladder at work. I got I to gotta be the, I, they say you can, anybody could be the president. I want to be the president of the United States. So they're willing to sell their souls to get political gain. 
But they don't realize this is forever, for eternity. Not only, not only did they do that, but the things that they turned to were broken and empty. And we don't realize that. Uh, people don't realize when they, when they turn their back on their families, they're turning their backs on the ones that love them to a world that doesn't love them, to a world that doesn't even know how to love itself. There's so many broken people in the world. Come on, dude. can I get a witness? So many people who are hurt, so many people who have been hurt, who continue to hurt others, they don't know how to show love. And so when you go to them and, and you're nice to them, they smile in your face. They take all that you have to offer. But when you don't have anything to offer, they begin to show their true colors. No longer are they smiling, but they'll curse you to your face and they'll rebuke you and, and treat you like trash. And you're like, where did that come from? I've been nothing but good to you. And say, so what? What does that profit me? Unless you got money, you need to leave. And you begin to wonder, what happened? And God says, and you chose that over me? I don't know. The people had built a religious system, which they said, this is our new truth. This is our new God. We're going to do it this way now. We were talking about, uh, I believe, last week, so, that some of their worship involved prostitutes. They would bring these women into the sanctuary, and they included sexual acts in their worship of these gods. And God just saw that, and it's like it's lewd, it's obnoxious, and how could you even put God's name in that foolishness? Because God's not in that. Can I get a witness? The God that we serve is not in that. Our God is holy, he is righteous, he is true. But they had defiled themselves and, and began to live that way. And they said, well, we like this way better. Because it was appeasing to the flesh, but it was damning to the soul. It's just like drugs, it's just like alcohol. Those things that people, uh, they want it so bad, but when they get it, they wonder, what, the, what have I done? What have I created? Why should we cling to these broken promises of unstable cisterns? They're worthless. Why should we cling to money, power? Come on. False religions. Why should we cling to these things that are, are so worldly and, and they're fad, they go out like the trash? Today you got to have holy genes. Not holy jeans, but holy jeans. Jeans with literal holes in them. It used to be, you know, you'd be ashamed to go outside. You, got, you would try to, Mom, could you sew this, please? Could you put a patch over this? Now they want holes in them. That's cool. I got some holy jeans. No, I don't. <laughs> if I do, I do. So, Stace, can you help me, please? <laughs> But the fans go in and out, so you never know. You, you're wearing your holy jeans. Oh, that was so last week. You don't know? Well, I don't know, because I'm not running those circles. Praise God, I don't know. God, they're putting these things in the place of the real God. When God promised, God promised to constantly supply us with everything that we have need of. God will supply you with some real jeans <laughs> without holes. God will give you that refreshing water that satisfies. He says it'll be like a well, a living water springing up in your soul, endlessly supplying your need. That's, what, that's the water I want. That's the water that we all should long for. Jesus said unto the woman that came to the well, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. I want the living water. <laughs> I want the waters that flow from heaven, amen? I know they will satisfy. 
satisfy my soul. I'm preaching about the two great evils. I went back in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 4. He says, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts, and of pits, through a land of drought and the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made mine inheritance an abomination. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they handled the law that and they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. This is what's happening in our world today. Brothers and sisters, men and women are longing for things that are not anything like God reading an article about that uh, coach that they fired for praying with his students after a football game. He did this every week. He did this every game. After every game, he would pray. Win or lose, that's what he did. It was not mandatory. The players did not have to come, but he was going to pray. Well, they fired that man after uh, many warnings and, and said, and, and I, I believe the courts upheld their opinion that he should be fired because of separation of church and state. They said it felt like the players were compelled to be a part of this prayer, but that was never the truth. But I'm telling you, America has gotten so far away from God so they'd rather say there is no God than to, to acknowledge who he is. I know there's a God. And if they don't claim him, I claim him. If they won't acknowledge him, I'll acknowledge him. You say, well, uh, uh, Jesus said to pray in the closet. Well, he did. But he also told us, if you'll be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. I'm not ashamed to pray for my prayer. I'm not ashamed to lift up my voice. And I'm not, I'm not ashamed to tell everybody about my Jesus. The nation of Israel included the families of Israel and the people of Jacob, which was Judah. Jeremiah knew Israel's history well. And the prophet recited the history of the people for several reasons. One, to remind them of God's faithfulness. God took them through that wilderness. He took them through a desert, through a dry land where there was no food. No man had ever made this journey before. And God supplied meals. Come on now. Their shoes didn't wear out. That's a faithful God right there. Come on now. You got to buy some size 12s. You take these out in the desert, I'll give you about three days. These things will be like falling off your feet. Your feet will be hurting. But God kept them. He's a faithful God. And then they, they said, we're hungry, and God gave them that manna. You know, that was good for the first couple of days, but you know how we get. What's for breakfast? Manna. Okay, what's for lunch? Manna. Okay. What's for dinner? You better not say manna. Manna. <laughs> Oh, I long for those things we had back when we were in slavery. Who, who does that? Who, who, who longs to go back to finding your face in the toilet bowl while you vomit up? Who wants to go back to coming home with busted head, busted lips? What happened? I, I, I must have fell. Don't even know what happened because you were so drunk out of your mind. Who wants to go back to that? But that's how Israel was, and they complained, and they murmured, but God blessed them. He, he sent quails, and they, they began to feast on the quails, but again, it was so much, it began to be too much. But 
God was still faithful. He reminded them to make sure that people wouldn't forget. See, you have to understand that they didn't have a Bible to read back then. Thank God we have the word of God. As I'm reading this to you, I see some of you checking in your Bible. Yeah, I like that. Oh, yeah, I want to bring that out. I want to re read that later. Praise God. And number three, to emphasize God's love for them. How many know God loves you? I mean, he loves you. Not just to say, well, God loves everybody. No, God loves Maria. He loves Joseph. And when you know that, you can begin to take it personal. God loves me. I'm a child of God. For God so loved Robert that he gave his only begotten son. When you say it like that, man, it, it makes you fall in love with him all over again. That's how God wants us to understand this. Number four was to remind the people that there was a time when they were so close to God. There was a time when they, they trusted in him. They believed in him because God did miraculous things in their lives. You know, the same God is able to do them even today. I'm telling you because he supplies all of my needs. And I don't know how. I mean, you know, sometimes you look in the bike and you say, I don't know how this is going to work, God. <laughs> I told you time at the time how God just told me, take your checkbook. I said, God, there's no money in the Bible. Take your checkbook. Yes, sir. Praise God. Got my checkbook. Most of us don't know what a checkbook looks like anymore. I know. I know. <laughs> you do? All right. Praise God. Most people just use their card, but God told me to take my checkbook. I did. And then I get a call from my wife saying, uh, my sister, she knows of, that we had a need and she wants to bless us. She put some money in the bank. Go pay the rent. Go get some food. Go do... Tell me God's not real. Amen. God's able to meet the needs. He said, but they've gone far from him. They've gone far from God, far from the love and the fear or the reverence of who God is. The world has forgotten the power of God. They've forgotten that there is a place called hell. They make light of it like, no, God wouldn't do that. If there is a God, and, and they still doubt whether there is or not, if there is a God, he wouldn't allow us all to go to hell. If there is a God, he'll love me no matter what. Well, there is a God. And he does love you. But he's a holy God. And he's giving you some rules. He's given you some restrictions, some things that you are obligated to do. And if you choose not to, notice I said choose. If you choose not to, then God is obligated by his righteousness to punish you for your disobedience. Romans 1, 21, it reads, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. This is the world that we live in. These people know God. They know of his power. They know of his goodness and his grace, his mercy and his love. Come on, it's not just grandma's religion. You've experienced it yourself. And now all of a sudden he's not God? Now all of a sudden it's, it's just something that grandma did? No, he's still God. He's still God, amen? Not just up on the mountain, but he's God down in my soul. He said fools. They were senseless. He said, and, and they, didn't even, they didn't even blink an eye at trusting in an idol. Something that they made with their own hands. I always marvel at that. I looked at that. And you, you read that in Genesis, how that when Moses was, I mean, uh, in Exodus, when Moses was dealing with them, trying to uh, get them to understand, and he was in the mountain talking with God. And they began to say, he's been gone for a long time. We don't know what be with this guy, Moses. Hey, Aaron, make us some more God. Make us another God. And I like how Aaron described it. They gave me my goal. They gave me their goal. We threw it in the fire and it came out a calf. 
That's not what happened, you know. <laughs> they threw it in the fire and they shaped it into a calf. And then when it came out, they said, that's our God. That thing that we just made is what delivered us from Egypt. How crazy do you have to be? How deluded in your mind do you have to be to begin to believe some mess like that? But they would rather sing and dance about that than recognize that God bought them out. After they saw the hand of God, after they experienced the hand of God moving and destroying that land in their favor, hmm, it always, it, you know, he led them through the wilderness. He got them right there to the mount. They saw the clouds just come around. They experienced the lightning. They heard the voice of God, and they said, we don't know what be this Moses. He, he, all these marvelous things he did in their eyes. All the marvelous things he's done in your eyes. Amen. All the times you've seen God do miraculous things. How can you do this? How can you turn your back on him? He said, and I brought them to a land of plenty. A land of, come on, we live in the, one of the most wealthiest countries in the world. Amen. The things we throw, around, throw away there are so many countries that would love to just have what we call garbage. They would love to have it. Oh, oh, oh I can't use this, uh, this video thing. This is uh, oh, five years old. It's outdated. Give it to me, buddy. In my country, that's, that's gold. Where I come from, man, if we had the electricity to operate that thing, <laughs> we'd be rejoicing. But we become so spoiled, we become so comforted in our luxuries that we had that we've forgotten that it was the hand of God that built this country. The one that they're so trying to deny. Don't say his name. Don't force your religion on me. But it was God that brought us here. Deuteronomy says, For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into the good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out in valleys and hills. America is a rich nation. America has a lot of uh, uh, room for growth, the land of opportunity. And everybody's trying to get here to live the American dream. But it won't stand if they keep Denying who God is. Did you hear what I said? The same for you and I. We're only blessed because the hand of God is upon our lives. But if we continue to walk away from him, God is going to stop. He's going to take his hand off of us. And we're going to feel like Jesus said, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? It was the first time he experienced anything like that. Because God made it plain and simple in Exodus. Exodus 20 and 3 he says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And when you read that, it's a little G. Because there's only one God, big G. Can I get a witness? <laughs> I'm preaching about the two great evils. So Jeremiah said, Wherefore I will plead with you, saith the Lord. With the, your children's children I will plead. For pass over the isles of Chittim and see, and send to Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Have a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. See, you got to understand, God is going to punish sinners. He's going to punish those people who rebel against him. Remember, he dealt with those angels who didn't hold their place. Who followed after Satan with his lies and trickery. His deception. God struck them down and put them into the pit. If he dealt with the angels, he's going to deal with us. 
And his word promises it. He pleads with us. We should be pleading with ourselves. Be afraid to think of the wrath and the curse that will be on those who've turned their backs on God. who chased after the world rather than following after God. And you know, when you catch up with the world, the, the, don't you know the world doesn't care about you? Can I get a witness? They don't care if you're the CEO of a big corporation. They don't care. I, I heard that commercial that said, uh, what's that? What's it talk about? Something doesn't care. Sister Higgs, I had it. The shingles. Shingles doesn't care. Shingles don't care if you work out five days a week. Shingles doesn't care if you, uh, you take good care of your, what you eat and how you behave and all those things. Shingles doesn't care. Cancer doesn't care if you're the CEO. And I'm here to tell you, the devil doesn't care what your title is. He doesn't care how many, much money you have in the bank. All he wants to know is, can I get you to turn on that one upstairs? If I can get you to turn your back on God, if I can get you to come on over to my side, then I've won. What does he want? He's drawn another soul into that pit of hell with him. He already knows his fate. He already knows his end. The devil read the book too. That's, that's Brother Ken's word. Brother Ken said, I read the book. I'm having a good day because I read the book. If you read the book, you know it's going to work out all right. In the end, we win. Come on now. In the end, God's going to win. But God's going to punish sinners. Thank God for his grace over us. Thank God for his mercy over us. But God was saying that even pagan nations don't turn their backs on their gods. You don't, you don't find a lot of people who say, well, I'm a Muslim. They don't go and now become a, a Jews or whatever, because that's, it just goes against their nature. But our prayer is that once we've tasted and saw how good the Lord is, come on now. Once you've experienced his grace and his mercy, once you've experienced his love, he says, come on now. How can we change right now? When the world is upside down, when we can see the end is so rapidly approaching. I've been talking, a lot of Christians have been having that conversation. I feel the end is nearer now than it ever was before. Sister Tensio is like, we can wrap this thing up right now. Let's go. I want to see my home up in heaven. I ain't worried about what's going on down here. Let's go home. A lot of people have been talking about it. It gets exciting when you start talking about it. But uh, Sister Lucille said, but what about the lost? What about the lost? Yeah, I know that's our mission. But like Paul said, I still have a desire to go home. I want to be where Jesus is. Have a nation change their gods? How can we do that? Turn our backs on God. He said we ought to be astonished. We ought to be afraid. We should be, we should be on our face constantly praying for this nation. Praying for them because you can't believe how bad. It's got to the place now when you say, you, you, uh, uh, let's bow our head and pray for our meal. Oh, you're just going to say that out loud in public in, the nurse, in, in, in this restaurant like that? You, you should just pray silently with yourself. What? I can't pray over my meal? What's wrong with the world? They look at you like you're crazy. Amen. I hear you, Maria. Let's say, I'm going to pray real loud now. I like, when we go to the pizza place, usually when we pray, people are turning, look, some people are like, amen, right along with us. And other people are just looking like, what are they doing? Like, it's some strange thing. That's all right. Isaiah said this, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children. And they have rebelled against me. Man, that's a sad state to be in. Jeremiah 13, it says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, 
the foundation of living waters and hewn out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. They committed two evils against God. We've turned our backs on the one who loved us. The one who said, come on, he says, I've seen the evil that's being done against my people by the Egyptians. And God sent Moses to go and get his people out. God loves us. God saw you in your situation. And he sent somebody to knock on your door. He sent somebody to meet you at Walmart. He sent somebody to tell you about a place where you could come and somebody would pray with you and tell you all about King Jesus. And they would lead you out of that darkness and bring you into God's glorious light. He said, but they've acted contrary to their duty and they've forsaken God. And then they, and then they made folly. They went to drink some old, y'all remember school water? When you went to the water fountain in school? I'm not talking about the ones that had a little bit of coolness to them. Because some of the water fountains in school did have a little bit. That was like in the basement, I think. When you went upstairs, the water upstairs was like, <laughs> it was worse than being thirsty. You would put the, your lips down against them. And, ah, what is that? <laughs> it's warm. It's not, it's not even water. It's just wet. And you don't want it, but you just need to get out of class for a second. Okay, that was just me. Okay, maybe it was just me. He said, well, this, this is what you turned away from me for? The world has turned away from God to go to some false religions? To go and, and, and sing themselves happy? To dance around and, and make like they're serving God, but really they're not, they're just serving their flesh? God says, how could they do this? This is literally folly. This is foolishness. You can look at it and see how vain it is, how wrong it is against God. He says they're broken. The water won't even stay in it long. The joy that they experience, it's not long. They dance in the aisles, they sing, they dance, and they, when they come back out, they still are dead in their hearts. They don't have any love. They don't have any compassion. Why? Because they don't have the truth. They don't have the answer. They don't have that living water. That life-changing water. Psalm 36 and 9 reads, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. God is the only one that can give us what our soul is crying out for. Hmm. Wherever men place their happiness in, Wherever false religions or uncertain comforts of the world are, they're always going to be lacking. Because it's never going to be enough. It's never going to satisfy you. Uh, you say, if I only had a new wife, well, if I had a new husband, or if I had a new car, a new job, if I had a new house, but none of these things will satisfy you. Well, if I didn't have cancer, if I didn't have this, if I didn't have that, when really, if you'd only bow your knees to Jesus, all of a sudden you experience this peace that nobody can understand. You, you'd experience this joy. You begin to appreciate the smallest things that you, God, I thank you for this apple. I thank you for this peaceful moment right now. I thank you, Lord, that right now I've got joy in my heart. What are you so happy about? I'm happy that I know Jesus. I'm so happy that I know where I'm going to spend eternity. How can you know that? Because I read the book, Brother Ken. I believe the word of God. I believe his true report. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55 and 2 reads, 
Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And you, your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in happy, in fatness. Closing with this. Two great evils. They had forsaken the Lord, abandoned, deserted him. Jeremiah 2, 17 reads, Hast thou not procured unto him to thyself, and that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, when he led thee by the way? It was God that led them with this fiery cloud. He made sure that they had warmth at night. And he put a cloud over them in the daytime to protect them from the burning sun in the desert. That's the God that we serve. He knows our needs. I told you about the shoes they didn't wear out. I told you about the water in the midst of the devil. The desert, God supplied them with fresh water. He supplied them with manna. He supplied them with the, 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 the birds. All the things that they had need of, God supplied their needs. Brothers and sisters, the same God is here tonight to supply all of your needs. Well, I asked God for a new wife. What you really need is a new heart. What you really need is to appreciate the wife that you have right now and begin to pray for her. Pray for yourself that you would learn to appreciate what you, we've got so much here in America. We're blessed beyond measure. We have so much mercy. We're still allowed, for right now, to come and praise God. But if we don't look, we don't stay faithful, that can even be taken away. The second thing they did was folly. Folly is a lack of good sense. Literally foolishness. Thinking they had found another way or a better way. People say, I found a better way. I found a way to get rich quick. Just give me your $10,000. And in two weeks, I'm going to bring you back $15,000. Sound like a deal, doesn't it? I want it. You want it? Follow me. And Bernie Madoff made off with the money. <laughs> Everybody has a scheme. Everybody has a plot, a ploy, and people go run into it. Oh, put me in. I want to be rich quick. God says, I want to give you life and that more abundantly. Come to me. And get real life, enjoyable life, a decent life. He says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down and shake it together. These are the things that God promises us. Nah, nah, I want to follow the Madoff crew. I want to follow the Get Rich Quick crew. It's a Ponzi scheme. They take yours and they pay somebody else off and hope somebody else give them their money so they can pay you off and just keep going there. And all the time they're skimming off the top. And all God wants is your faithfulness. All he wants is your love. Jeremiah 2 and 18 reads, And now what hast thou to do with the way of Egypt? To drink the waters of Sihor? Or what hast thou to do with the way of Assyria and drink the waters of the river? He's saying that these are, they're going to things that are less than what God has given them. They, they're thinking they've found a better way. We think that uh, if, if we go, we go to the world, the world will help us. But they won't. We think that, oh, oh mama bailed me out. My, my dad always bailed me out. Uh, I, I know somebody will. I, I, I'll call Uncle Sam. The government will bail me out. And these are all the things we, turn, we run to, but only God can save your soul. Yeah. 
These things were uh, uh, an example of what we do with our spiritual life. He says you run the things and, and you get these bags and they're full of holes. And you put water in it and you say this is going to sustain me while it's leaking all over the place. And when it runs out, you say, how did this go wrong? And God is looking at it like, are you crazy? Couldn't you see that wasn't a good plan? Don't you realize how good we have it here? How blessed we are with the hand of God in our lives? Man. See, God was really trying to get them to understand, I'm not going to do things the way you expect it to go. But I'm going to take care of you. I'm not going to do things the, the way that you think. It, I'm not going to let you see what I'm doing. But I'm going to do it for you. Isaiah 55 and 8 reads, My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither your, th your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, your thoughts. See, the people of Israel were foolish to act as if they knew what God was thinking and planning. His knowledge and his wisdom is far greater than any humans. And we commit folly when we think that we know more than God. When we think that we found another way because there's only one way. Jesus says, I am the way. No man comes unto the Father but by me. No, Pastor, uh, I, I, just, I just have to tell you right now, I, I doubt that. I found another way, Pastor. I, I'm, I'm going to stop coming to church. I, I'm going to call you, though, because... When things get hard, when my back's against the wall, I'm, I know you'll still be there. You know why? Because I'm trusting in Jesus. Those fads, they go away. Those false religions, they don't care about you. Why don't you stick with what God has already placed in your heart? What God has already given you? We're foolish to try to fit God into our mold to make his plans and purposes conform to what we want them to be. We have to realize he is the potter and we are the clay. Lord, mold me. Shape me into the image that you would have me to be. I don't want to be found guilty of two these, these two great evils. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, they forsaken the Lord. What about your life? Are you drinking that water of the world and you're not satisfied? Do you find yourself longing for those peaceful evenings where it was just you and the Lord, where you could pray and you could feel his arms around you, you could feel his presence? Well, I'm here to tell you he's still here. He's still in the soul-saving business. He's still reaching out to the lost. He's still healing the sick and raising the dead and he still has an open door for you if only you be willing to come out of that darkness and step into his light Jesus said take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart The door is open. Come on, let's find a place to pray. Spend some time talking with Jesus. God, help me.
that I don't commit these two great evils. It's praying time all over the sanctuary. God bless you.
God is letting the world know that there is no God like our God. And when we come to that knowledge, brothers and sisters, we can't go back to anything else. Nothing can satisfy like our God. He's the one that gives us that living water springing up within our souls. If you find yourself thirsty, thirsting and you can't be satisfied the things of the world they won't do it try my Jesus I want you to pray as long as you like when you finish praying consider yourselves dismissed it's been good being in the house of God and God help us to ever be mindful and not commit these two great evils Father, we're so grateful for this time together in your house. Grateful, Lord, for the word that was preached. Help us to rightly apply it to our lives, oh God. Help us to love like Jesus loved. Help us to live in a way that's pleasing unto you. God, we'll be careful and sure to give the praise, the glory, and the honor to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. See you tomorrow for prayer meeting, Saturday for Bible study. Consider yourself dismissed when you finish praying. God bless you.